so I, I went to uh, Catholic school uh, up to eighth grade with uh, all white kids and probably two or three black kids, but you know, predominantly white school. And then I went to my neighborhood high school in ninth grade that was 99% black kids. Um, so the first day that I, I walk in to ninth grade, I walked into the lunchroom and you know, it was like 500 kids and for, to this day, I don't know why I did this. I'm sure it was because I was I was nervous, and you you know I got the, I have a thing with fear. I don't like being scared, so I'm sure I was I walked in, uh, I looked around, and I said, "Excuse me, can I have your attention? Can I have your attention, please? He's here, he's here right now. Thank you, thank you." And people was kind of looking, and there was this one dude, and he was sitting there. And he looked up to me, he said, man, don't nobody give a that you here, right? And I said, hey, just give me 10 minutes, your girl gonna care, right? And he was like, all right. And you gotta watch that nod. That nod is not a good nod. He was like, and I was like, okay. So I went, so I'm walking up the steps, we're out of the lunchroom and I had forgot about it. So we're going and I'm walking up the steps and he had taken one of those combination locks and he put the lock in the palm of his hand and put, his, put the, uh, the loop around his knuckle. And he was holding the lock in his hand. And as I was walking up the steps, he cracked me in the side of my head with the lock. And I went down, I was out, I don't remember nothing. I still got the lump on my head. You can't see it because I got my hair, but I still like, there's still a lump. So I remember I fell down, I hit my mouth on the steps, all of that stuff. You know, so I went up, so I'm in the principal's office, all of that, the police come, and I got the ice on my lips, and I'm, I'm sitting in the principal's office. And my father comes in, he sees me, and, and you know, I'm telling the story, now the police are there. And I remember I saw this kid, they put him in handcuffs and took him out of the school. And I'm looking, sitting in the principal's office and I'm watching the police take him out and put him in the back of a police car. And I just couldn't believe it had escalated to a kid being removed from, from school. And I was laying in my bed that night and I was just feeling like shit. And I had the recognition that I had caused this kid to throw his life away, right? And he was kicked out of school and I never knew what, what happened to him, but I, I, I have a sense that it, it, it didn't go well beyond there and I felt a deep sense of regret and a deep sense that I had caused an emotion in a person that made them do that. And that, that feeling of regret turned into a sort of a fear of how much power I had. And I was like, everything I say and do has that kind of effect on other human beings. And in that moment, I decided that I would never walk into a room and do anything other than inspire and uplift and enlighten people and help people to be the greater versions of themselves. And I would never do anything that would cause people to, or to rile up the darkest, dirtiest parts of people. I only wanted to enliven and enlighten and inspire. And I remember laying in my bed that night and I made that promise to myself and I made that promise to God. And it's something that has completely shaped how I approach people, how I approach moments, how I walk into rooms, how I deal with every human being on this earth. To him and to his family, I want to send uh, my deepest apologies and I hope my, my words and my sincerity uh, reach you and I, I hope your life uh, has gone well for you.